10 ongoing mega projects in Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe is a landlocked country in southern Africa with a spectacular scenery and abundant wildlife, much of which is contained within parks, reserves, and safari regions. Victoria Falls, on the Zambezi River, plunge 108 meters into the Batoka Gorge, where whitewater rafting and bungee jumping are available. Matusadona and Mana Pools National Parks, located downstream, are home to hippos, rhinos, and a variety of birds. Despite the ongoing COVID-19 outbreak, the Zimbabwean government has continued to prioritize infrastructure development since the projects are vital to strengthening the economic environment, according to Finance Minister M. Thule and Cube. He stated that of the 25 billion Zimbabwe dollars set aside for infrastructure projects in 2020, 6.6 .6 billion had been invested by the end of July, with the remaining 18 billion to be raised and injected in the second half of the year. Despite the COVID-19 pandemic's pressures, the government continues to prioritize continuing important infrastructure projects in roads, energy, water, and sanitation, the minister stated during an online press conference. Treasury has earmarked resources for these projects, which are crucial for ensuring a business-friendly climate, he said. Some of the priority projects, according to the minister, are those being supported by China in the energy and transportation sectors. Stay with us as we travel across Zimbabwe in search of 10 ongoing initiatives that have the potential to transform the country. Please subscribe to Africa Reloaded as we begin the countdown. 10. Mate Blown Zambezi Water Project The Mate Blown Zambezi Water Initiative, MZWP, is a large-scale project taking place in Zimbabwe's dry Mate Blown North area. The project aims to alleviate Bulawayo's persistent water shortages by transporting water from the huge Zambezi River to the city. The project falls into the category of a major project. It is projected to cost 600 million US dollars, which is a sizable sum in African terms. The project will be divided into three phases. The Gwai Shangani Dam is the first phase of the project. Phases 2 and 3 are the Gwai Shangani Dam to Bulawayo Pipeline and the Gwai Shangani Dam to Zambezi River Pipeline, respectively. 9. Robert Mugabe International Airport Robert Gabriel Mugabe International Airport, formerly known as Harare International Airport and then known as Salisbury Airport, was founded in 1956. It is located 15 kilometers south of Harare, Zimbabwe's capital. The airport serves as Zimbabwe's principal entry point and a natural gateway to southern Africa. Robert Gabriel Mugabe International Airport is Zimbabwe's busiest airport, with a runway of 4,725 meters in length and 4 to 6 meters in width, capable of handling wide-bodied planes such as the Boeing 777, B747 or comparable. The International Passenger Terminal can accommodate 2.5 million passengers per year, while the Domestic Passenger Terminal can accommodate 500 Dawsons. 8. Zimbabwe's Urban Renewal Project Bank of BC, the financiers of the Sakava Urban Renewal Project, are scheduled to disperse the first payment of one million US dollar for the ambitious project in the coming days, giving UTIR a big boost. Before the city can formally acquire a drawdown from the eight million US dollar facility, Bank of BC is completing the last stages of its due diligence. The facility is intended to be used to build three blocks of apartments in the initial phase of the project. The project, which was intended to start at the end of March, but was halted owing to the continuing COVID-19 national lockdown, is co-sponsored by Mutier City Council and Plan Infrastructure Development. 7. Wanje Power Station Wanje Power Station, located in Zimbabwe's northwestern region, is the country's largest coal-fired power station, with 920 megawatt of installed capacity, with four 120 megawatt and two 220 megawatt units. It is next to the Wanky Colliery Open Cast Mine and is the 14th largest thermal station in the Southern African region. The station was constructed in two phases. The four 120 megawatt units were put into service between 1983 and 1986, 
while the two 220 megawatt units were put into service in 1986 and 1987. The station now generates around 40% of the country's electricity needs with all six units operational. In August 2018, CPC officially started expansion work at Wanjie Power Station, which will result in the addition of a third stage to the station, with the construction of two 300 megawatt units. Wanjie's generation capacity would be increased from 920 megawatt to 1520 megawatt as a result of the expansion project. 6. Zuva Petroleum's 100 AE Solar Power Plant Zuva Petroleum is committed to using renewable energy to lower its carbon footprint. An initiative to build 180 solar power plants in Zimbabwe was recently initiated by a Zimbabwean oil business. Zuva Petroleum's petrol stations, liquefied petroleum gas, LPG, locations, and depots will be powered by the electricity generated. The oil business intends to begin operations in 2021. They also intend to use a net metering scheme to send 30% of the electricity generated by the solar power plants to the national grid. This will improve the population's access to electricity. Only 32% of Zimbabwe's 16 million inhabitants have access to power. 5. Lake Harvest Aquaculture Expansion the Lake Harvest Aquaculture Project on Zimbabwe's Lake Kariba is Africa's largest and most sustainable tilapia fish growing operation. It delivers a significant supply of affordable protein to the southern African region while also creating jobs in Zimbabwe, particularly for women fish sellers. As part of its efforts to selectively re-engage in Zimbabwe, this will be the Africa Development Bank Group's first private sector investment. 20,000 tons of fish will be produced annually by Lake Harvest Aquaculture. The company is largely aiming for African markets, with Zimbabwe accounting for 37% of total production. A further 50% of the product will be exported to markets in southern Africa. Many experts regard Lake Harvest Aquaculture to be a paradigm for sustainable fish farming on the continent. The project is divided into three primary operations. One, breeding and rearing in land-based fish ponds, Backerton Farm, two, rearing in lake-based floating cages, and three, a fish treatment plant. Four, Zimbabwe Road Construction Project. Zimbabwe has set aside 900 million US dollars for road development projects as the country works to rebuild and resurface over 161 kilometers of roads as part of the road development program. This is the most significant step forward in the country's road infrastructure restoration in the last two decades. The road construction projects in Zimbabwe aim to build trafficable world-class roads for public comfort and economic growth. 3. The $2 billion Sessa and Chinese Energy Power Plant Harare China Africa Sunlight Energy, sponsored by China, announced it will start construction on a 600-megawatt coal-fired power station in western Zimbabwe early next year as part of a $2 billion energy project in the power-scarce southern African country. The business, a 50-50 joint venture between China's Shandong Tation Sunlight and Zimbabwe's Old Stone Investments, has completed coal exploration in Gwei, near Bulawayo, and mining is expected to begin in November. Zimbabwe's peak electricity demand is 2,100 megawatt, but the country can only produce 1,200 megawatt, with the remaining 300 megawatt coming from imports, mostly from Mozambique. Two, Semwa Dam Construction Project The Semwa Dam project in Zimbabwe is on schedule, with 40% of the project completed. CDE Sendai Nayabani, a legislator, examined the construction site and praised the government's dedication to expediting the project. The dam's construction has long been planned, but no substantial building actions have been taken. However, once the new arrangement was in place, construction activity could begin in earnest within a few months. Semwa Dam is being built along the Ruyu River and will be completed in 2023. 
forming the border between Rohingya and MT Darwin districts. The Zimbabwean government, through Treasury, is fully funding the $3.4 billion project. 1. The Rehabilitation of the Bait Bridge Hawari Kairindu Road Project. The North South Corridor Road is a multimodal transcontinental interconnector that would eventually connect Cape Town in the south with Cairo in the north. Its renovation would spur development in the country and area, with over 50 million cars estimated to pass through in the next 20 years. The work on the road, according to Transport and Infrastructural Development Minister Joel Biggie Madiza, will entail enlarging existing lanes to match current requirements, with contractors having to remove existing asphalt layers, enhance the foundation layers, and then overlay new asphalt on top. The route will be dualized in the project's second phase. The five contractors are all working on sections of the route that are 20 kilometers long, and if their work meets the required criteria, they will be awarded additional contracts for segments up to 100 kilometers long. Fossil Construction is constructing the Chifu to Vuma segment of the road, and they are on schedule. They plan to finish the first 20 kilometers by the end of August and the remaining 20 kilometers by December 31, 2022. Many nations in Africa, such as Zimbabwe, have interest in venturing into big construction projects, but lack the appropriate funds to do so. Zimbabwe, on the other hand, is a struggling nation who has managed to carry out several projects, though not a wealthy nation with several other projects in the pipeline hoping to meet their development plan. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share, and subscribe. Do not forget to also turn on the notification button for more updates from Africa Reloaded.